Hey guys, so I've decided to dedicate my bonus video this week to answering a question that I get every great now and then and I've avoided answering it for one reason or another and finally I decided to stop putting this off and go ahead and answer this question before I start the new version of the Blockbuster Buster in just a matter of weeks. Um, and that is what happened to all the peripheral characters from the Blockbuster Buster, namely Nerdlinger, Fedora Freddy, and El Lover. And like I said, I don't get that question often, but every great now and then I get an email from a very passionate fan asking me what happened to those characters, why did I phase them out? Um, and finally, you know, I, just today I got another email um, about about asking me that question, and I decided, you know what, I've, I've put this off long enough, might as well go ahead and answer this. Um, now, very, very quickly, just to give you guys just a little bit of backstory, um, I'm sure that if you're watching this video, you know the backstory of these characters, but for the sake of those of you who don't know it, um, it's very simple. When I was first conceptualizing the Blockbuster Buster, originally, the show was going to have two hosts, not one. It was me and my best friend Paul Satoshit. I'm Erod, he's Panda Bear, and we're the Blockbuster Busters. Um, providing two very different perspectives on each movie that we reviewed together. But, unfortunately, last minute, right before I started shooting the episodes, uh, Paul dropped out because he got a real job making a real movie uh, called Rock Jocks, which you should check out. Um, and I found myself without a co-host um, after I had already written the first five scripts to the show, and um, they, which were designed for me, to, my character, to interact with another character. So instead of rewriting the scripts, I decided to instead create other characters for the Blockbuster Buster to interact with, and hence came the creation of Nerdlinger, a lover, and Fedora Freddy, and... Um, as the show progressed, I would use the characters, um, but just to be clear, it wasn't, I didn't use the characters out of a necessity, um, to feed, um, their fandom to answer requests from you guys to put the characters in the show. Um, something that I, I learned from Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield, um, during an interview that he did, they asked him, you know, because he had been drawing and writing Garfield for like 20 years. He had um, officially celebrated the 20th anniversary of the character, and they asked him, how do you keep coming up with Garfield strips? And Jim Davis said, um, well, I don't come up with them. Garfield talks to me. Garfield tells me exactly what to do, and the interviewer was like, what? And Jim Davis explained, I come up with a situation, you know, whatever it might be, you know, uh, leaves in the yard, um, garbage day, um, the, mil the milk going bad, whatever, and I come up with a situation, and then Garfield tells me, like, what he would do in that situation. And when it came to those characters, my characters, that's very much the way I approached it. I would never forcefully put them into a script. Um, I would be writing a Blockbuster Buster episode and suddenly I would realize, oh, Nerdlinger would probably interfere here. He would probably have some nerdy fact to interject with or some kind of protest. Um, a lover would definitely come in here and talk about all the sexy ladies in this movie or something. Um, so it's something that I would only put it into a Blockbuster Buster episode if it felt natural. If the character suddenly like just spoke to me in my mind and I knew, oh yeah, their voice is definite, their voice definitely fits here. Um, so that's the way I always wrote the characters. That's the way I always approached them. It was always a very organic uh, process as far as my inclusion of them in episodes, then fast forward to 2015, which as most of you know was an incredibly rough year for myself and a lot of the producers from Channel Awesome, when Blip fell. And things were really bad and a lot of us, you know, were um, 
very close to either bankruptcy or just leaving the whole uh, video production thing behind. Um, and around that time, I don't know what happened to me emotionally, but I was in this um, state where I just completely lost my connection to those characters. Uh, and it was a little sad, but it also felt like I, I was changing. I was, I was getting older, I was maturing, and I just wasn't the guy that, that played those characters anymore, that wrote those characters anymore. Um, and I know they're not completely gone. Um, if the situation deems appropriate, if the opportunity comes, I would love to play those three characters again. A lot of you know that one of my favorite things to do in the Blockbuster Buster was to play Nerdlinger. It was one of the most freeing, wonderful experiences to play a character that is so much unlike myself, that is so much better than me, that is so sweet, so kind, so innocent. It was, it was therapy to play that character, but I just, I don't hear, and I know this sounds crazy, but I don't hear their voices anymore in my, in my head, uh, schizophrenic as that might sound. Um, so, and like I said, I, my approach with those characters was never to force it. Never to forcefully try to write them, come up with anything uh, to do with those characters. I, I only add things to my videos if I am inspired, like 100% inspired and motivated to do it. Um, otherwise, I know it won't work. If, I, if my heart's not in it, I know it won't work. And I'm sorry to all of you who are big fans of those three characters, but my heart's just not in it anymore. And if I can't do it right, I, I shouldn't do it at all. That's my uh, philosophy. So anyway, there you go. There is the answer to the question that I get every great now and then. And also, I found that once I stopped playing them, very few people seem to notice. Um, like I said, I only would get an email about um, their absence every great now and then. So that was another thing that stopped me from considering possibly bringing them back. But anyway, so there you go. There's the answer to that question. I hope that clears things up. Um, Nerdlinger, a lover, and Fedora Freddy are gone, but they're not forgotten. This week on my Patreon page, I am doing something that I've never done before. I'm doing a reaction video. Now, a lot of you may say, Erod, you've done reaction videos in the past. Yes, but every time I do a reaction video, um, I get a million kajillion emails telling me, Erod, you did it all wrong. You were supposed to film yourself reacting to something, reacting to a movie or a trailer or a preview or a clip or something. But all you do is just talk about um, whatever it is that you saw. You react in past tense. So for the first time ever, I am posting a reaction video on Patreon of me reacting live to my first viewing of the Samurai Jack Season 5 trailer. This is a trailer that I've been waiting 12 years to see, all right? So this is 12 years of build-up, 12 years of anticipation, all culminating in what I filmed uh, in that video. And if you want to see that, not only do you get to see my live reaction of the Samurai Jack trailer, but then um, I will cut to a video very much like this one, me breaking down what I noticed about the trailer and my personal opinions about the trailer and my hopes for Samurai Jack Season 5. So if that video sounds interesting to you, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash erod and pledge one dollar. That's it! One dollar and you get to see my ongoing series of bonus videos every single week and you're helping me produce the Blockbuster Buster reboot which starts on March 5th, all right? We need all the help that we can get. So all you patrons, you're making it happen. You're helping us to keep producing that new show um, with as much quality as we can muster. So thank you so much for that. And as usual, I sign off with the line that I say every week because it is 100% true. I cannot do what I do without you.